I finally got my hands on the 2022 Kia EV6, and today I'll be comparing it against its main rival, the Tesla Model Y. Maybe you're on the fence between the Tesla Model Y and the Kia EV6. In this video, I'll cover some of the features of this Kia EV6 to see if it has what it takes to compete against the top seller midsize electric SUV, the Tesla Model Y. Which one is the better choice? Today we'll see about that. The Kia EV6 is all new for 2022. Price-wise, the Kia EV6 has the obvious advantage over the Tesla Model Y for many reasons. One, depending on when you are watching this video, unlike the Model Y, the EV6 still qualifies for the full federal tax credit of $7,500. Most importantly, the Kia EV6 gives you the option of a smaller battery and a single motor version that starts at slightly under $42,000. And when you add the federal tax credit, you can get an EV6 for under $34,000, that's a great deal. Okay, let's talk about the exterior of the Kia EV6. I really like the front end of this car because it offers a little bit more detail than my Model Y. My least favorite area of my Model Y is the front end because it looks uncooked, unfinished, but this is not the case with this EV6. These nicer headlights are three-dimensional, so you have like a little hole right here. I hope I can capture it with the camera. And then you have these double running lights that are pretty pretty awesome and what is a modern car without fake vents well you have them here too on the sides and also this grill is purely ornamental but it does host the front facing camera and then down here this is where you actually have the car breathe because these vents come open when the car needs to breathe and i think this hosts the front radar for the cruise control on this car but i'm not sure let me know in the comments if i am mistaken and then talking about the hood of this car it has these nice arches these lines that offer an aggressive look to this car and notice from this angle you can see this wide wide body but what it does sacrifice it does sacrifice the interior front trunk of this vehicle that is minimal so if that's something that you like about the Model Y, know that here is minimal, and I'll show you, I'll show it to you a little bit later. And then moving on to the side of the car, I think this is the least favorite angle of the EV6. In my opinion, the low roof, the high waistline, the very angular hood, and the very short overhangs make the EV6 look artificially elongated. I believe that the Hyundai Ionic 5 looks better, and I know it looks as subjective, and that's why I'm glad the Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis offer you three approaches to the same segment. While we're here, let's talk about dimensions. The Model Y is longer, wider, and taller, and higher off the ground, but the wheelbase of the EV6 is about one fourth of an inch longer, and maybe that's why this vehicle appears to be longer than the Model Y. This particular version is the very well option GT line. It has a single motor in the rear axle, and it gives you about 310 miles of range thanks to the bigger battery, compared to the base version that gives you 232 miles worth of range. The GT line offers unique wheels and body accents that give the car a more aggressive look and things like body colored wheel fender flares. In this case, you can't really see them because the car is black, but in other colors, uh, it does make a difference versus the base model. Another area that I really like about this car is this rear end. This tail light that goes from one wheel arch all the way to the other. This looks really aggressive. And if you notice the angle of the tail light kind of mimics what a spoiler will do. How cool is that? Then you also have this continuous satin black metallic accent that goes across as well. And then this sort of a fake vents right here. They look cool, but they do nothing for the car. And then right here at the bottom, you're gonna have this fake grill element and then sort of a diffuser. And notice that awesome reverse light with five lights very very interesting i really like it and then they kept the badging to a minimum with the kia here the model here and the s pacific gt line here up here you have a second spoiler that i think looks really amazing hopefully i can capture it with the camera notice how it protrudes past the line of the hatchback so it kind of looks like a canopy style with two openings very very aggressive Another area in which the EV6 knocked her out of the park is with the charging port. It's hidden right here. So to open it, you push it like that. 
and then it becomes open. It hides away kind of like the way the Model Y does, hiding it back here. And the tail light here, you have it hidden in this rear area, which I think is pretty cool. And I don't have access to it right now, but in the EB6, you're able to plug a connector right here that allows you to use it as a power source. Not available on the Model Y, so let's close it right here. How cool is that? And something I really like about this hood is where it opens. Notice how most cars will have the hood partitioned and open right here, and this will be the fender. Well, in this case, the hood comes all the way down here. So this is very similar to what the I, Volkswagen ID4 does with their front trunk, is that it doesn't have much uh, storage room. In this case, this is just a cover, and if you open it, you have room there for what, a pizza or something? But other than that, you don't have a lot of room here. Unlike the Model Y that offers a pretty generous front trunk. But what I like about this car is that it offers shocks instead of springs, which look cheap in the Model Y. So this mechanism sounds awful when you open the front trunk of the Model Y, but these are shocks, kind of like what you find in some premium brands. Let's talk about tire and wheel combination for this EV6 GT line. They're 235 by 55 19 inch wheels. And if you notice, they feel the wheel well really, really well. So they dress up the car, they're black with aluminum finish, and they sit pretty flush against the vehicle for that sporty wide look. And something I like in particular is the sidewall. Notice how generous it is. So it should protect the rim against a curb rashing and all that and it should also offer a more comfortable ride i like the key fob of this ev6 i think it's pretty good for the segment nothing spectacular feels kind of heavy so it's nice and then you have these buttons to maneuver the car remotely and then you have your usual locking unlocking and then trunk release again you just put it in your pocket and then just touch the sensor right here the handle will pop out and we made our way to the interior Let's talk about this interior. I left the EV off so that I could show you how minimalist it looks in here without the accessory being on. So you don't have anything visible here, but notice how as soon as I press the start button, all these sensor buttons come on. And then you have this continuous screen all across that is very, very nice and upscale. I'm really liking the interior of this car because it offers a perfect blend of physical buttons. So let's turn it on. On a side note, something that I ran into in the time that I've had this EV6 is the fact that this car requires you to turn it on right here and as well turn it off. Unlike the Model Y because the Model Y with your phone it works like your key. So you can literally just walk into the car, put it in drive and take off. And in this one, it's, it takes an extra step. This may be minute to some of you, but it's a huge convenience when you just walk out of the car and the car will do everything for you. Shut itself off, even close the windows if they were left open. And in this car, if I, if I were to walk out of the car right now, the car's in parking, so it's safe. So it says vehicle's on, so it, it warned me already, right? But no shimes or anything. So I walk out and the car will begin to beep because it was left on. So. I think this is something that Tesla does better because it will automatically turn off the car for you. So now I have to come back and turn it off there. Little things make a big difference in car ownership experience. So this screen is very, very crisp, looks really nice and it offers you all the information you need. So the range is always visible to you right here. And then you have your speedometer right here and then your compass here and on top of that you have a head-up display right there that is not available on the Model Y and then here you have same thing very very similar to what you have in the Tesla Model Y a soft injected molding here soft vinyl here and then hard plastics here the sound system is really hard to recreate on video and because of copyright and all that I cannot show you how it sounds but it sounds really good these speakers are very similarly located than the ones on the Model Y so I think it sounds pretty much the same and as you can see the rear visibility is a little bit better on this car but not much I will guess that you have to remove that headrest from the back row if you want to have better 
view of the back. These side mirrors are bigger than the ones in the Model Y, so they offer great visibility. The steering wheel offers you this flat bottom, kind of like what you find in the Model Y, and it is different than the base model. So this is the nicer steering wheel, and I did have problem trying to find my right uh, positioning for to be able to see through this smaller diameter steering wheel. So I had to play with the settings of the um, telescopic steering wheel that you can actually move back and forth. It's manual. On the Model Y, it's all powered. So once you set up your preferences, you will have this move by itself for you. And this is manual. Here you have this busy center console right here that offers this big dial, kind of what you find in the Mach-E. Very, very similar actually. I do like the Model Y because this is more simple, more minimalist, and you have a charging pad right here. The Model Y offers two, and they're over there, so you have one right here. And I don't like this piano black. It's not my favorite choice of finish. No big deal. And then you have this smaller storage room right here. As for the rest of the car, it's pretty well optioned. This one has single touch windows for the front, up and down but not for the back. I don't like that. And then again, you can quickly access your side mirrors with these buttons right here, unlike the Model Y that you have to go to the center screen. You have this fake leather and fake suede. I don't know how this fake suede is gonna hold up in time because in places that you have a lot of dust, my experience with suede is that it doesn't hold up too good. It doesn't look clean as time goes by, but heated and cool seats, something that is not available, not even in the top of the line Model Y performance. Unfortunately, it's brought daylight right now, so I cannot show you the ambient lighting of this car, which is really, really nice. I hope I can capture it at least partially here. It's very similar to what Mercedes does with their vehicles because this interior feels pretty upscale. As far as legroom, this car is very roomy. I would say that even more than the Model Y. Hard to say, but the seats roll all the way back, and I'm not that short. I'm about 5'11", and my legs are fully extended right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit in the back and show you how much room I still have in the back seat with the front seat pushed all the way to the back. The seat is pushed all the way to the back, and I still have room for my knees here. And this flat bottom, gives you the option to extend your legs a little bit, which is pretty cool. Similar to what you have in the Model Y, because remember, this is a dedicated AV platform. So that's one of the advantages. And then you can recline the back seats, but these are manual. And I think they do recline a little bit more than the ones on the Model Y, which are also manual. But it does feel a little bit enclosed here compared to the Model Y, because notice how this roof line is pretty low and these headrests are pretty high so it doesn't have a lot of headroom the roof line is pretty low so i barely have about an inch above me which is not great because i'm not that tall as far as everything else on the second row well you have pretty cheap classics right here you have a, a pocket a map pocket right here and a difference between the model y and this is that the model y offers an extension of the materials that you find in the front you find them in the back but here you find cheap plastics right here vinyl right here and even cheaper plastic right here um, did i mention already depending on how i edit this video is that this carpet feels of better quality than that in the model y and here you don't have vents but don't freak out yet so the Model Y has the vents right here, and then you have USB connectors right here. But this car has them located here. This is your USB-C connectors. I wonder how that works because these are moving parts, so it might be annoying for you to plug in your phone and then have people move this thing back and forth. And also the, the AC vents are right here. Very interesting. I don't think I've seen them like this in any other vehicle. They usually have them like either up here or in the center console. Well, the EV6 has them right here. Before we talk about the rear cargo capacity of this car, I wanna show you what affects it tremendously. Is this roof line that goes down right here and then this angle window takes away the capability of this car to have more rear cargo capacity. So in this case, I think this car offers about 24 square feet 
of uh, cargo capacity in the rear, and the Model Y offers about 30. But I don't have a problem with it because otherwise all cars will look the same, right? Also, another thing you're gonna notice is that this car doesn't have this tub compartment that the Model Y has. So the Model Y has a really generous storage area right here. But what I really like about this car is the fact that you can release the back seat from here and then have access to the full cargo capacity. But what this car does different than the Model Y is that once you lower the seats, you need to unlock them using this. So what it does, something as simple as this, what it does, it prevents these seats from rattling when you're driving with the seats down. And that's something that is very annoying with the Model Y is that whenever I lower the seats, they rattle. They rattle as it is and they rattle even more in this position. So this car does that a lot, lot better. That has been my presentation of the Kia EV6 GT line. Now let's go drive it. I finally get to drive this car. I'm so excited because I've been looking forward to this moment. I just hope that more of you will volunteer for me to drive your cars on my channel. It will help me grow. And I just love driving uh, random cars. But this is one that I've been uh, looking forward for a long time because I think Kia and Hyundai are doing great things as of late. Kia has been upcoming in their in the quality of their products, maybe what, 08? They started like really pushing the rest of the manufacturers. And now with the, with the new uh, Genesis brand that it started as a car, now they have a whole brand. Reminds me of Toyota back in the 80s when they were building quality cars and then they jumped into the premium segment. At this point, it's, it's up to the, to the buyer what they wanna do with their new car purchase. Uh, some people are just tired of seeing Teslas everywhere. So Model Y, I mean, I live in San Diego and I live within a mile of two uh, superchargers. So I'm surrounded by cars. So every time I go to the mall or go to Costco, I often find myself walking up to the wrong white Model Y. I do find the seats on the Model Y a little bit more comfortable. And maybe because I'm used to it, the sitting position is a little bit better on the Model Y. This is way slower than the Model Y dual motor. Uh, the dual motor is at what, 4.8? This is at 6.7 or something like that. But for the day-to-day, -day, this is plenty of go. I don't have a problem with the acceleration of this car. And if you ask me, unless you have a particular need to have an all-wheel drive, this is where my model will be, where my money will be, because it offers most of the options of the GT line all-wheel drive um, at a fraction of the cost. I think it's what, three or $4,000 less? This is almost the top of the line, minus the all-wheel drive, the 20-inch wheels, and the heat pump. For some of you that live in those um, colder climates where you need a heat pump, so that, it's the, so that it doesn't start borrowing into your range. Uh, Range-wise, this is a little bit shorter than the Model Y, but again, if you have a home charger, which is the best way uh, to have an electric vehicle ownership experience, then either vehicle is fine. I do notice that this car is a little bit quieter. I There's some rattlings that I cannot spot. Very similar to what you find in the Model Y. That difference in price, it's, uh, it's something to consider. I, I do think that because of the fact that this car still qualifies for a federal tax credit and the fact that it's able to offer you a version with a single motor and bare bone stock, it's gonna start really uh, taking sales from Tesla, from uh, the Model Y, because I think it was a huge mistake that Tesla had that Model Y single motor, and then they, they killed it within, what, a few weeks? It was just ridiculous how they made it available, and it had something like 240 miles of range, and then they killed it right away. Another advantage that the Model Y has over this EV6 is the fact that you can get the Model Y in a seven-seater configuration. I've been in that car, and yeah, you can fit seven people, comfortably but it's not a natural seven seater so when you have the third row on you kill all the cargo capacity of the model y so this car at least doesn't pretend to be anything else than it is it's just a nice wide long hatchback let's get on the freeway and see the road noise it's got plenty of go 
the car feels a little bit more cramped, maybe because it's just got that lower roof line and, uh, and the, the missing panorama sunroof. But other than that, I mean, I'll be, I think I'll be dishonest if I didn't say exactly how I feel. And I feel that I really like this car and um, I will get this car uh, over the Model Y. Why? And mainly because of the price advantage. Reminds me a lot of the Mach-E, but this one drives better than the Mach-E and the Model Y. Those other two vehicles are kind of stiffer suspension. This is more of a softer, traditional car type of suspension. I think this one has struts in the front, unlike the Model Y that has a double wishbone. So that other suspension is a little bit harsher. So this one just feels like a, like a normal car that is it's very quiet. Is this better than the Model Y? Well, it's not better than my Model Y performance and nothing comes close to the interface integration of the Model Y, the, road, the route planner, the autopilot and all that. It's still miles ahead of this car, but if you can live without those things, this is a great car. So now it's time to go back to the studio and give you my final thoughts on this great Kia EV6 GT line. $15,000, that is the price difference today between the Tesla Model Y and a comparably equipped Kia EV6. In this case, that will be the GT Line all-wheel drive. That will be the fairest comparison to make between these two great vehicles, but if you also consider that Kia offers four different trim levels to the model, to the Kia EV6, soon to be five with the GT, then you can see why I said that this is the better choice, at least in my opinion. Yes, there are some areas in which the Model Y is the better vehicle, but the price gap is very hard to ignore. And if you can live without some of the unique features of the Model Y, then the Kia EV6 is the car for you. The rear wheel drive GT line should suffice for those of you that live in drier, warmer climates and the price gap between the EV6 and the Tesla Model Y just got bigger, closer to about $20,000. The EV6 is well built and it comes from a car company that makes reliable cars, charges faster than most EVs out there, and it offers a longer warranty than the Model Y. And it comes with features not available on the Model Y, like the 360 degree monitor. And it comes at a much cheaper price for those of you that have been priced out of the Model Y as of late. And to be fair, I should also say that Kia dealerships are marking up the Kia EV6 by about 10 to 12% over MSRP. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about my thoughts of this great EV alternative, which to me is the real Model Y contender. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.